So this here is going to be a painting video on how to paint the skull cannon of corn. So we've got one finished in front of us. We actually did two of them. You'll see them both in the video. If you like this video, if you think this looks good, stay tuned and we'll show you how we did it. If you want to see a little bit closer of the model, skip over to the end and you'll see a bunch of different angles and different points of view. The comments will have the colors that we used and the paints we used. And aside from that, stay tuned and you'll see us paint this guy up. So this here is going to be a video on how to paint the skull cannons of corn. Now these are two models that we've had for a long time. We painted them up and we had them on the table. We had just primed them and you can see there's a layer of dust on them because they were painting so long ago. We can almost dust them off a little bit. Uh, as far as assembly goes, it's pretty much done with the exception of the three or the two fenders that go over the pistons right here. They were never put on. Um, so they'll have to be primed and put on as we go. So we'll probably use a brush prime on that and then uh, or, or spray prime them and then we'll just paint them as we go. So every time we do armor like this here, just assume we're doing those as well. Um, and then we'll connect them once we're all done. So, and they're off of both models. So what we've done so far, or what we had did at the time, was a base coat of Chaos Black, um, just a spray can, and then we did a Mephiston Red base coat on uh, the blood letters. So that's the two things you see here. Uh, the Mephiston Red's probably enough to get redone because it's really, really old and it's worn through because it was never clear coated, never finished. So the first place we're going to start with this model is we're going to redo that Mephiston Red base that's right here. So that's going to go uh, thin coat over the blood letters again just to bring that color back up. We're also going to be doing any of the uh, tissue type gore areas. So that's the area inside of here as well as the area here inside of the cannon. There's some uh, fleshy bits there as well. And remember we're doing two thin coats. Although for the blood letters in this case, we're gonna just use the one thin coat. Um, but yeah, we're just gonna bring that color back out, just like so, and then let it dry. So we'll finish that up and be back here in a few minutes. This is a model now that we finished with the Mephiston Red. And as you can see, we've not only brightened up the blood letters a bit, but we've added this uh, fleshy bit down below. We also um, did this uh, support here for the skull cannon itself, as well as the some areas here with fleshy bits in the cannon itself. So that finishes our Mephiston Red, and so we'll start working on the skull cannon itself now. So the first shade we're gonna start using on our skull cannon is going to be some Agrax Earth Shade. And what we're gonna do is just put it all over all of this tissue here, uh, not touching the blood letters of course, but just getting it into all the grooves and uh, letting it fill in some of these spaces. So we're just taking our Agrax Earth Shade and we're just comfortably filling in all of these spaces here. As you can see, letting it pool into the bottom down here, filling in all those gaps and grooves and holes because it's easier than painting them up ourselves. So we'll continue with this and we'll be back here in a few more minutes. So there's our model now that we've got the Agrax Earth Shade on it. And as you can see, all of the pits and stuff are much more visible. We're gonna wait till they dry. And then we'll meet back here and we'll start our first highlight shade. So this is our model now that the uh, Agrax Earth Shade is dry. And what we're gonna do now is take a dry brush of Pink Horror and we're just gonna lightly go all over that. Just like so, just hitting out the high points here, flushing out some of the tissues. Something like that. So we'll keep working at this. So this is our model now that we finished with the Pink Horror. And as you can see, it's definitely um, lit up and more fleshy looking. So we're gonna put one more dry brush highlight over the top of that, and it'll be with Cadian Flesh Tone. So the rule, as you know, is the brighter the paint, the less you want to put on. 
So we're just going to dry brush this Cadian flesh tone on really lightly. Just like so. Just like that there. This is our model now that the Cadian flesh tone highlight is finished. And as you can see, the sinews and uh, gore and things like that looks really, really nice. So we're going to leave it like that for a moment. We'll come back and do the skulls later. But what we're going to do now is start doing these armor pieces. And what we're going to use is some Eschen Gray. And we're just going to paint each one. Just like that. And that just cleans up the model a little bit. We're being careful not to go over our gore area. But it does let us trim up some of the lines here like so. so this is our model now that we finished with the Eschen Gray. And as you can see, we've cleaned up all of the lines here. So before we move on from there, we're going to deal with the uh, fleshy bits here at the front by the teeth and around the eye socket here. So we're going to start those with a base of Bugman's Glow. And then we'll probably dry brush on some Cadian Flesh Tone over that uh, just to lighten it up. So we'll do both of those now just to, um, just to see how they look. And once again, photos are at the end of the video if you want to see exactly what got colored. And then uh, we'll trim it again with the Eschen Gray. So we'll do those now and be back here in a few minutes. So this is our model now that we finished with the face as well. So at this point, our armor plates are done, our sinews here are done, and our fleshy bits on the front are done. So we've got one more thing to do. We're going to put an edge highlight all along the armor plates, and we're going to do it with a little bit of Dawnstone. So we're just going to have a little bit on our, on our brush. We're just going to put a little bit of that edge highlight right along the edge there. So we'll keep going with that all along the edges here. And we'll be back in a few minutes once all that's finished. So here's the model now that we finished with our edge highlight of Dawnstone. So as you can see, we've We've uh, trimmed along a lot of the armor pieces that are there. So now it's time to do the trim, of which there's quite a bit of it here, all along the uh, carapace here, all along the cannon, the um, base that the blood letters are standing on, some of the trim on the pistons. Once again, if you want to see exactly what's done, just fast forward to the end, take a look at the um, stills at the end of the video, and you'll see what needs to be done. But we're going to do all of this trim with some Retributor Armor. We're using a watered down layer, but we can always come back and um, put a second coat on as well. So we're going to keep going at this just like so while we work to get all of the trim done. And we'll be back here in a few moments. So this is our model about halfway done our trim and we've run into a little bit of a snag. So in places like this wheel here, the um, gold trim is going to be on the outside and the, there's going to be a metallic silver trim on the inside. So you've got to do the silver trim before the gold. Same with this back tire over here. The, uh, the wheel itself is going to go silver, but all these brake pads and stuff are going to go uh, gold so painting the gold now just to go underneath and paint the silver seems a little bit reversal and and most of that is just a product of the fact that it's already glued to the base so while we're doing the gold trim what we're going to end up doing is adding in certain places our silver trim ahead of time so we're going to take a little bit of lead belcher and we're just going to go in and we're just going to go in to some of these areas here and just sort of lay that down, then put the gold in in front of it. Um, so when we come back, we'll actually have both colors done. So this is the model now that we finished with both shades of metallic, the gold and the silver. 
And as you can see, there's quite a bit of intricate work there, especially with the wheels and the brake pads and then the pistons in the back, the platform, um, all of the trim as well as the front wheels there. And then the, the skull cannon itself has a bunch of trim on it. So with all that base work done, uh, we're going to start the next arduous task, which is shading it all and then highlighting it. So for the silver, we are going to shade it with some Newell Noil. And then we're going to add the typical highlight of Ironbreaker, of which we're just going to put it over just some of the high points here. Uh, lighten up a couple of these buttons, hit the chains good, uh, the tops of the tires, things like that. So we'll do that now in a few moments. Following all the metallics with the silver, we're going to do pretty much the same thing again. Shading with Agrax Earthshade to add a darkening to that uh, gold. And then probably highlighting it with some Brass Scorpion, which will sort of add a tingy burnt look to that gold, as opposed to the yellow gold we're running here. So we'll, this is our model now that we've finished with the shades and highlights on the metal. And as you can see now, we've got that nice uniform sheen on all of this front carapace armor and such. Um, so we've gotten rid of all the splotches and it's just a nice, a nice, um, shiny finished metal. Same thing on the back here. You've got this overall sheen here, uh, but the grooves on the inside are all filled in, uh, because of the shade. Same thing with the chains over here. The recesses are filled in with, uh, the Newell Noil and then the highlight, uh, iron breakers over the top. So you've got that nice 3D appearance, which is kind of what we were looking for. So we're going to move on from there, and what we're going to do now is start on um, everything bone on uh, the skull cannon. So we're going to take our base of Reekland, of Rackard flesh, and what we're going to do is very subtly pick out each of these skulls, as well as any horns like this, and any of the little side spikes here, and they run all along the side as well as on the bottom. All of these spikes sticking out, and they're going to all get that base coat of uh, Rackarth flesh. So just like so, and it's right watered down, being careful not to go on our black at all. Don't worry if you get right to the level there, uh, because our shade over the top will fill in any of the other recesses. But what we're trying to do is just pick off each of these little horns here, these spikes and these teeth. So we'll do that for the whole model. Be back here in a few minutes. So this here's our model now that we finished with the Rackard flesh. And as you can see, we did all the horns as well as all the skulls, all the little teeth, as well as the uh, big horns on the top and all the teeth in and around the eye socket. So we finished all of those. What we're gonna do now is add our first shade to the Rackarth flesh. And so what we're gonna do now is take a little bit of Seraphim Sepia and just spread that over all of these bony processes here. I'm just gonna take a little bit of that and just brush it right over all of that Rackarth flesh, just like so. Make sure we get it in all of the grooves. And we can always do a second coat if we have to. This is the model now that we finished with all of our shades. And what we're gonna do now is come back and dry brush a highlight over all of these bones. And we'll do that with some Screaming Skull. So we'll take our Screaming Skull and we'll just dry brush that right across the horns just like this, trying our best not to get on the gold or into the crevices. So we'll keep working at this and we'll be back here in a few more minutes. So this is the difference between the two uh, bones once the highlight layer is done compared to this one that's not done. So we did that for all of the skulls as well as all of the, the teeth. Uh, the teeth in the mouth, as well as the teeth around the eye socket, and then all of the skulls along the cannon and in the uh, gore that's here. So that pretty much finishes off the cannon. 
What we're going to do now is move on to the two little blood letters here. We've already base coated them with uh, Mephiston Red. So what they're going to need now is their first shade of Karlberg Crimson. So we'll do that now. So we're just going to take that and just put that right over them. Trying our best not to splash that onto the skull cannon itself, which we've just finished. So we'll keep going at this. And we'll meet back here in a few minutes to start putting highlight layers on them. So now that the shade has dried, we're going to start lightening up that um, um, blood letter skin tone. We're going to start with a dry brush of Evil Sun Scarlet. And we're just going to brush that lightly right over all of the body here. And by doing a highlight, you're going to leave those dark recesses um, where our shade has gone. While brightening up those highlights like so. So we'll finish up this, get it a little bit brighter to that color, and be back here in a few minutes. So now that we've done the dry brush of the Evil Sun Scarlet, we're going to add another dry brush of Wild Rider Red, which is a little bit brighter still. So because it's brighter, the same rules apply. We'll use less of it. And we'll just dry brush that right over the high points again. Just lightening them up again. So we'll keep at that and be back here in a few more minutes. So with the last of our bright red getting dry now, what we're going to do is add a little tiny bit of Troll Slayer Orange. And we're going to dry brush that just on all of the locations that have these little bumps here. So on the, uh, the backs and on the upper thighs and on the shoulders, all those will get just a little tiny tinge of orange. Just like that, just to make it a little tiny bit more color depth. So with the last of the Troll Slayer Orange, we're pretty happy with how the Bloodletter skin is done. So what we're going to do now is take a little bit of Abaddon Black, and we're going to start cleaning up the rest of the model here. So what we're going to be doing is cleaning up along the horns, backing them up to where they insert in the skull, as well as cleaning up any uh, mess on the sword, as well as the spikes on the back the claws on the toes, and pretty much anything else that should be black. And then what we're going to do after that is a dry brush of Eschen Gray to make it similar to what we did with the armor on the skull cannon. So we're going to do that on the horns and on the back and be back here in a few minutes uh, once the blood letters are further along. With our blood letters almost finished now, what we're going to do is take a little bit of Screamer Pink and we're going to do the tongues. each one just like so so we'll do each of those as well as the large tongue in the mouth of the skull cannon here so we'll track that back up there and get those finished and be back here in a few minutes so now that our screamer pink is finished on the tongues we're going to take a little bit of pink horror just to give a um, depth effect to that so just a little edge highlight with a nice sharp brush we'll do it to both of them as well as the tongue on the skull cannon itself and the last thing we're going to do is take a little bit of balthasar gold and we're going to do the trim of the swords here. There's a little bit of detail there. So we're going to do that. Then we're going to make them flaming swords. And there's a video already on the channel on how to do that. It just involves the same colors we did for the blood letters, adding uh, brightening up to yellow. So I'll link that here as well as in the, the text down below. And you can use that to finish off the swords. And you'll see how it looks in a few moments 
That said, you could leave them completely black or paint them all the Balthazar gold and any of those work. So we'll do that now, meet back here in a few minutes. So the first thing we did with our flaming swords is we did a very light dry brush of Mephiston Red. And all that did was point out the peak as well as just trace along the edge of that sword. So you get a very light edge highlight as well as that center line. Same as on this one here. So with our next step, we're going to take our Wild Rider Red that we used earlier. And we're just going to put an edge highlight along all of those swords. And then I'll collect on some of the pointier spots. So we'll do that around and we'll be back here in a minute. So this is what we look like now that we finished with the Wild Rider Red. So as you can see, we did the edge highlight along the edges here. And then we did a center, just a spotting uh, line up the center of each. Just like so. It doesn't have to be neat. In fact, it uh, a little bit more wiggles just adds to the flame. So what we're going to do now is the same exact thing. We're going to use some Troll Slayer Orange this time. And this time we're just going to dab a little bit in the centers of each of those uh, lined areas. And uh, we'll be back in a minute. You'll see what it looks like. So as you can see, all we did with the Troll Slayer Orange is just dab a couple of times. Uh, brightening up the centers of where we did the Wild Rider Red. The last thing we're going to do now is take a little bit of Uriel Yellow and we're just going to touch the centers of those in just a couple of spots. Just like so. So we'll do that for the rest of them. We'll also come back with the Uriel Yellow and do the Demon Eyes. One and two. And then the same on the other side. And that should pretty much finish the uh, model. So we'll probably base it as well. So we'll do that now. Be back here in a few minutes. So this here's the finished model. As you can see, we attached the fenders over the, um, the back struts. And we did the eyes. If you look closely, you can see the blood letter eyes are done. So that finishes our model. So if you think uh, that this turned out good, if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to leave a like or uh, a comment or uh, subscribe to the channel. That'd be great. Uh, otherwise than that, um, we will see you at the next video we do. Thank you for staying on this long. If, uh, if you do want to see some other angles of the, the model, uh, stay tuned because we're going to show you a bunch of different pictures from different points of view. Uh, that'll come on in a few moments. Otherwise than that, thank you for watching this long, and you guys have a pleasant day. We'll see you at the next painting video.